Hey guys, Dungeon J here. Today we're going to be taking a look at Mutant Year Zero, Road to Eden. It's a tactical turn-based RPG set in the post-human Earth. Now this was published last year on December 4th, 2018 and designed by Bearded Ladies. This is the PC version review, which you can pick up for around $35 off of Steam. And in this game, we're going to explore the realm of possibilities in which the last remnants of civilization are reduced down to a mutant hog and a duck. Remember, if you like this style of content, to give a thumbs up and subscribe. It really helps out. When the game begins, you are slapped down in the middle of no man's land, literally as you control two mutant characters to begin with, a warped version of Howard the Duck and Porky Pig. Aptly, both are named Ducks and Borman. Don't let their appearances fool you. Both are battle-hardened warriors known as Stalkers, settlement dwellers from a place called the Ark, tasked with going out into the zone to find scrap metal and bring it back. What they find out in this wasteland comes in the usual variety of bad baddies. Old technological robots, wolves, ghouls, and a faction which is led by a group of irradiated humans whose skulls are shaped like overripe melons which give off this distinct impression that if you pushed in too hard with your finger, there would be one loud pop as it exploded. The Ark seems to be the last true bastion for any regular humans left in the land, ran by a man known as the Elder. The Ark uses the resources the mutants gather to help all the inhabitants survive. We also learn from the Elder that almost all humanity has been wiped out. It all started with the plague and ended with massive war. Former humanity is known as the Ancients, and I have to say it was kind of interesting stumbling through the rubble in some of these landscapes and coming from relics from the past, and the use of the lore between Ducks and Borman as they come across these old relics really had me cracking up because some of those one-liners were just really nice and out of nowhere. Elder Almighty, I've seen some crazy shit in the zone, but this takes the bullet. This house must have belonged to some small people. I mean, small, small. That is just the weirdest. Now, the storyline comes in a very neat contained package, one part exploration and the other from how the environment is shaped. The use of broken down cars, old crumbling buildings, and signposts is still functioning tech that the vast majority of the survivors really have no idea how it was properly used. All this leads to interesting interplay between the two stalkers as they travel across their broken paths and overgrown shrubbery, but they aren't the only members of the group. Along the way, other mutants join up and each has their own set of unique abilities and talents that help to flesh out uh, certain counters or or change the way that you've been fighting tactically from the get-go, which really leads us to the gameplay itself. While the encounters are turn-based, there is also a fair amount of stealth involved in this game. Also, it's in the mechanics itself when fighting. Using stealth modifiers really helps in your battles. And the use of critical strike is mandatory for success as the game progresses. Each encounter becomes increasingly more difficult to handle. There is a variety of difficulty settings as well to beef up that challenge, but I found that this has some problems. There's no randomness to the items. Where they spawn, what you get is finite. It's a finite resource. And if you up the difficulty and start strategy, Wrapping down on health kits from the local arms dealer in the arc in an effort to just try to survive each encounter, it's really going to gimp your progress. But you might ask why? Well, when you up the difficulty, you lower how the hit point regenerates after each battle and how the special abilities go on cooldown. Not to mention that the game heavily rewards stealth kills and taking someone down before they can shout out for help is paramount to finishing some of these segments. However, the mobs get harder and taking someone down with stealth starts to become a matter of making sure that they're locked down or incapacitated while you unload weapons into them, usually for at least two rounds. Now, when you incapacitate them, they can't shout out for help, and this special ability that Berman has was really good at this, which is a semi-quiet charge. So, I found in the later stages that I really had to use Borman's quiet charge ability frequently, and 
it is on a cooldown where you have to kill a certain number of creatures before it unlocks again unless you're on the normal difficulty so you can see and it just becomes a, a whole lot of mess all that being said the level of customization between each character in your squad helps to level out the competition interchanging mutations for special perks weapons and their attachments and accessories like flares grenades and body armor all this allows for some breathing room you can change out members of your squad on the fly and before each encounter you can lay out what items or person best suits this particular particular battle before you go into it. Also, you can save anywhere at any time and you can fast travel to any beginning locations you've been at before. Each area is also self-contained, all with their own particular number of enemies, but it also gives a little bit of room for exploration. Checking each building for scrap or weapon parts for upgrades, exploring the environment, and finding the best angle to attack at a particular straggler or even the main group itself. And I really enjoyed this element. While patrols were common, the path they explored was set. And once you knew that they would be coming around a bend at a certain point, you could use this to expose weaknesses and exploit it. The game itself ran for the most part really great, but there were some issues. The occasional stuttering of the game, especially when loading into an area, a character you control getting stuck in the terrain, while annoying, I never had to reload for a character getting stuck. Usually I could just wiggle them out of the spot with just a little bit of effort. Also, the AI was a hit or a miss. When fighting against them, they sometimes did things that didn't really make sense. They'd run around a corner further away from you and try not to engage for no other reason than the sake of just running around that corner. And it didn't happen a lot, but when it did happen, it kind of made you question what they were doing, and it throws you out of that immersion of the setting a little bit. But there you have it. Just a few technical glitches and hiccups, but overall a very smooth experience sound and music design did you hear that voice that was weird keep your guard up take a chill pill all right if the voice wants to bring light to the zone i'm all for it Mutant Year Zero isn't going to be an OST you crank up on the loudspeaker and just listen for the funsies, but it nails what you want out of it with atmospheric vibe. When traveling in an abandoned complex or just traversing the countryside, it has an interesting tone that just kind of really fits. And overall, I think that's what you want, music that just fits. The weapons and the ambience all sounded just about right. I also really enjoyed the one-liners when aiming a weapon. While somewhat repetitive, it was also fitting to have one of the members give out a one-liner right before they do the coup de gras on the enemy. As for the voice acting, I found they did a really good job. The banner being my particular favorite part, just random conversations the squad would have with one another. It helped to get invested in the story and what was happening. Overall, Mutant Year Zero is a decent above average game. It has a fun gameplay arc, a decent linear story, and beautiful artistic style. While the playthrough for the game of this nature is relatively short, it only takes about 12 to 18 hours, give or take. It just going to depend on how you play it. It does seem to offer some form of replayability, especially if you want to try and give yourself a challenge in the encounters and ramping up the difficulty. All that being said, I really would have loved to have seen this game hovering at a little bit of a lower price tag. Then if you tack on that there are some performance stuttering issues here and there and noticeable bugs several months after a release, it just really makes me feel like this title is something that you're going to want to wait for a discount on. Well guys, that's my review of Mutant Year Zero Road to Eden. I'm Dungeon J signing out. Have a great day gaming. Later. Just walking the line and there's nobody with me